Hi crafty friends, for today's card I'm sharing a floating floor pop-up card featuring Waffle Flowers Bar Up stamp set. To start off the card, I'm stamping out all the images using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and I'll be coloring them off screen since this video is a bit longer because it has a ton of parts to it. Since I'm going to be using a bunch of these characters, I wanted a bit of variety and I do so by masking off some of the images. I'm masking off the baseball bat from the boy and I'm shortening the little girl's hair. But you definitely don't have to do this at all and you can just color them up differently, but I'm a bit extra. So my method of masking is to adhere a full adhesive post-it to the cardstock and I'll carefully cut out the portions I want masked. So I'll remove the rest, stamp the images, and then go in with a Copic friendly pen to finish off the image. For the little girl, I decided at this point that I didn't want to mask her off, but I changed my mind and I go back and do that later on off camera. I am really excited to share this card with you guys because I had originally created this card for my sister's birthday last year and I thought that it was such a fun card that I wanted to film it as well. Normally I'll just turn on the camera when I create a card and you'll get what I create. But this is one of the only cards where I was like, man, this would be really fun to share with everyone and put together for everyone to see. So hopefully you enjoy this card, especially if you're a baseball fan. This works really well for both boys and girls, which is harder for me to do. I have a hard time creating masculine cards. For this card, it's going to be a top folding 5x7 card. I had to use a bigger card to fit everything I wanted without the card being too crowded. Since I have a lot going on inside the card, I'm keeping the outside of the card super simple by stamping out a bunch of the baseball items with white pigment ink on craft cardstock. So then I will move on to my floating floor. I'm just going to be using a pencil to mark off all my score lines and also to figure out where the middle of the card is so I can create a baseball diamond. This card panel is five by seven and once you score it down and create that floating floor, it'll be a lot smaller and the area that you're really working with is five by five. I am going in to create that diamond and I am just doing it about half an inch from that five by five square and I'll be using eclipse masking paper to create the lines to create that baseball diamond on the card and then I'll go in and ink blend the field. For each of these strips they're just quarter inch strips and I thought that looked good. It actually might have been a little bit too thick but you know I was just gonna work with what I had and it looked fine. Once I ink blend as well, it's not the best blending, but once you add all the characters, you won't even notice it. You are way more focused on the fact that one, it's a floating card, a floating floor card, and it's also a pop card, and there's a whole baseball team on this card. For this floating floor, I'm using Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock because if you're creating a floating floor, you want it to be pretty sturdy. Otherwise, if it's a little bit flimsy, then it might collapse or not fully open when you have the recipient open your card. Otherwise, I would suggest Bristol Smooth for uh, ink blending if you have trouble ink blending because it's a lot smoother but it's a lot flimsier. So I sacrificed the nicer blend for the sturdier cardstock which I think really helps in this particular moment. So I'm really excited because baseball season is about to start. I am a big Giants fan. I am born and raised in San Francisco, so I'm diehard Bay Area. San Francisco 49ers, the Warriors, and the Giants. And baseball is one of my favorite because 
it's just so relaxing for me. For me, like when I craft, I actually love having baseball games play in the background. It's just super mindless. And because there isn't so much going on at a time, you don't have to fully pay attention. So you're just kind of listening to the crowd and the announcers and the game itself. And when it gets exciting, of course, you can stop and turn around. But most of the time, it's kind of a slow sport and I know not everyone loves it, but I do. I actually work right next to the baseball field at Oracle Park and I love going to games. And unfortunately this year, of course, you're probably not going to be able to go. They've started suggesting to do um, cardboard cutouts of people and fans, which I think is super weird. But I think it's also kind of cool because if they catch a foul ball, they'll send you the baseball. So I finished up the ink blending and I'm just placing all the little characters where I want it to be. And I'm going to go in with a pencil just to mark off the little areas of where they should be. I will say that I got very, very lucky here because I forgot that once you fold the card, you have to account for the image moving up a bit. So the batter is going to be folded and then he might peek out. So the easiest way of figuring out if he will go over the card when you close it is to put him forward laying flat to see how far um, he pops out of the card. I got really lucky here and he fit perfectly almost. I just had to trim off a little bit of the white outline around his bat and it worked out. So if you've watched my previous floating floor card, you know that I use an X-Acto knife and a ruler to create this uh, this card. It, there's no die for this. I wouldn't buy a die for this because you really just need a craft knife and a ruler to create this. I am a huge fan of interactive cards where you don't need special dies to create them. I'm very, very particular with the interactive dies that I will purchase because I just don't think they're all necessary and they're usually pretty simple if you have the patience to do so. So you'll rarely see me create using interactive dies unless it's something like I, my exceptions are the the magic picture changer cards and the magic iris that Lon Fawn has because those cards are a little bit harder to create cleanly without issues without using a die and I've tried and it's just it didn't work out. Once I finish creating those slits I'll go ahead and score my lines so half an inch and an inch on both sides and that will create the little table for our pop-up card. I'm just going to go in with Teflon bone folder just to make sure that those lines are crisp. So you'll see that it just creates that little C. This portion of the video is actually created after the fact of the card. Once I finished the card, it the crowd size that I had created just bugged me so much because the proportions were so off. Their heads were so much bigger than the little images and it just made absolutely no sense. And so I went in to replace it. So this is after the fact of finishing the entire card. So you'll see my original crowd size and it's probably not noticeable, but it bugged me so much that I just had to go in and change it. So I'm not being very uh, detailed with my crowd. It's, they're just basically gray blobs. They're circle and squares and that's it. I'm adding a bit of shading and that creates the whole effect of a whole crowd and it's not very complicated but I do spend a bit of time and so I'm showing you the process of how I was able to create this little crowd. But anyway, so back to the cardboard cutouts. It's really strange. So I don't know about you, but for sports, it's like the noise is what's the white noise, right? And the fact that there's going to be no noise and no crowd is going to be so weird for any sporting event. And so we'll see how it looks with the cardboard cutouts of fans. I think it's a really cool idea. I think it's totally overpriced though. And I get that they're trying to make some money because there won't be crowds buying food, buying tickets to the games and I get that 
but I think it's super weird. So anyway, so you'll see that this is the portion of the card where it's finished and we jump ahead, but I just wanted to show you that I just went in and added that crowd in the background. So we'll rewind it a bit and I'll show you how I put together the floating floor. So for the floating floor on the top portion, you want to add adhesive to both of the scored panels because one will be directly at the adhere to the bottom of the card and one will be um, adhered to the top portion of the card and I just do that by folding down the card. So for the bottom portion of this floating floor you're only adding adhesive to the very edge and how I do that is just I close the card panel and close on it and it will create that floating floor so it's perfect. So you definitely don't want to add adhesive to both of the scored areas for the front portion because then you won't be able to open and close your card at all. For the little strips, they're just half inch strips that I add a score line to so I can add adhesive to the edge and I'll stick it through and I'll also freeze frame this. So you'll run the strip through and have it stand 90 degrees against the card panel. So then um, because you have the slits, the little strips will be free to move in and out as you open and close the card. So once you have that done, um, go ahead and add all the little characters right on the strip and you want to make sure that your card is open so that way you're adding the characters right above the floor. So some of these characters have their legs spread open and so it acts as a stopper for the images when you open and close the card. So you just want to make sure that you're adding these characters with an open card so they are sitting right above that floor. And so yeah, I added all the little characters. They look super happy and I, I just love this card. So I'm just adding the sentiments for the card. I'm adding one on the inside and one on the outside and I stamp it on um, a scrap piece of paper because I just didn't want to stamp directly in it. I knew that with the dimension, I'd probably mess it up. So I'm just adhering it into the card. I'm taking that piece of craft cardstock that I had stamped all the baseball images on and adding it to the outside of the card. And for these pop-up cards, I like to create a card belt for the card so it closes. Because if you don't have the belt, it kind of opens on its own. I'm just adding a bunch of layers to a rectangle. So I'm layering black, orange, and white and adding another sentiment to the belt and I'm adding adhesive and placing it on. My last touch for this is to go in and decorate the front using some of the baseball items that I had previously stamped and colored. I also went back and stamped out the baseball hat and the t-shirt and I couldn't help myself. I had to put the SF logo on it. Sorry if you're a Dodgers fan, I am a diehard Giants fan. So we can agree to disagree on our baseball team choices if that bothers you. But I thought that this was a fun card. And of course you can color it for your team even if you're a Dodgers fan. I prefer orange and blacks and that's just me. So I'm just adding a few decorative items to this card and this is more or less complete. You'll see that I've switched out the crowd um, and it looks a lot better with the proportions that I had changed up. That's it for today's card. I hope you enjoyed it, especially if you are a baseball fan or know someone who would appreciate a baseball themed card. I think it's definitely a fun one to create. It does take a little extra time, but I think that it's just a fun card to give and receive. So if you create this card or recreate it using your baseball team, feel free to tag me. I'd love to see it. And I hope you enjoyed this card and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye.